Alrighty, good morning. Uh, it is a Monday morning, uh, Martin Luther King Day, Inauguration Day. Uh, a lot going on out there in the news, a lot going on in terms of weather. Southern California back into the Santa Anas. Up north here, we've got a wind advisory, had frost advisories last night. We got a little bit of fog, windy in the mountains, a little bit of surf along the coast, but uh, I think the big story is going to end up being Southern California. First thing I want to show you is I was off, I guess I was off two weeks ago, went down when the swell was real big up here, and I went down to uh, Santa Barbara down when, around Point Conception and you get inside the point there and the waves go from 20 foot to like seven foot, eight foot, five foot, which is awesome. So uh, I spent uh, a little time at, uh, with my son at Rincon and got this day. It's, uh, it's hard to see, I'm not a great uh, photographer, but uh, I laid it out, but you can see Rin Rincon probably one of the best point waves. I think it's rated one of the best point waves in the world, but it's just awesome. The culture down there, the whole thing doesn't break a lot, but when it breaks, it's awesome. Today or this day was probably, I'd call it three to five. Hawaiians would call it one to two. Surfline called it zero to one. So go figure. <laughs> it was it was easy, easily overhead on the sets, but just that wave goes forever. If you've ever driven by on your way to La Conchita or south to Ventura, and you look back and you see that point wrapping in. Great example of wave refraction, bending of the energy in as the bottom slows down. And in the topography, the, the bathometry takes hold of the wave. It turns the wave in into that cove. It's awesome. So I had a great time down there with my son and my family. And now we're back here. It's, you know, here it is. That's a couple of weeks ago. And we're back to the um, PDS, uh, da damaging situation. What is it called? The PDS, yeah, particularly dangerous situation, which I would agree, most definitely. Um, it's in this zone, the area in purple, uh, the pretty similar, it's Ventura, just south of Santa Barbara, and grabs Malibu, but it should also, those areas, because probably the stronger wind speeds, but there's strong winds all the way down to San Diego, and you can see here, let me push this in a little bit, and you can see that we've got uh, wind advisories. Those are the areas of the wind advisories and the red flag warnings. The reds being the red flag warnings. Let me make sure, make sure you can see that. And then um, let's see if I can pull up here. So this is the wind. This is the HRRR. This is a rapid upgrade uh, refresh model. So it, in other words, it doesn't, the GFS takes a long time to update. This thing is updating all the time. It's a little more granular. And it moves around a lot, right? So it's updating constantly. So you got to check it throughout the day. Um, this is on COD, College of DuPay, on my links. And if you go to um, weather data and then models, you'll see, you'll find the HRRR, HRRR, HRRR. Mm. This is wind speed. And this is over the next 24 hours. So first thing I think is really cool about this is you can see see San Diego so I'm gonna roll it through first and the first thing you're gonna notice this is the winds picking up into the afternoon into the evening hours and then you see it really get, get hold here here's the border here are the wind speeds so it's gusting this is up in the hills behind San Diego behind the ocean side about gusting forecast to gusted 52 miles an hour those yellows representing probably 50 50 well there's a gust to 85 miles an hour Wow way up high up in the hill behind uh, Laguna Beach, way up on the hill. But what I want you to notice, first of all, the first run through this, I want you to see how we, we're talking about Venturi effect, right? You can see it. See, it comes off the hills, goes down into the flats where it kind of gets, slows down, right? Because it spreads out. But then it comes back together. It hits those canyons, say in Laguna Beach, it hits the canyons uh, of Malibu, and it funnels. And that's a Venturi. And see how it reaccelerates. it re reanimates the wind, if you will. Isn't that fascinating? And those canyons, those, that, those fingers, you can see them all the way up the coast. It has a lot, you need the wind direction to be right, right? You need a northeast flow, or a strong easterly flow, or northeast flow, or north-northeast flow, but you get that. And so that's, what, that's the Venturi effect. And I think I have another example of it here. So basically, let's take a peek at this again. So this is how the winds go today. This is why there is a PDS, particularly dangerous situation, and red flag warnings and wind advisories. The winds really get going as we go into the day today and into early tomorrow morning. So usually, let me check the time on this. This is Tuesday. Uh, this is tonight, late tonight. And then this is early tomorrow morning. So what happens on these wind events, these Santa Ana wind events, offshore wind events, Diablo wind events, they really get an, an energized push 
in the evening hours, right? When things get the coolest, when the air is sinking, and there's just a lot of dynamics that promote this. So overnight, typically, is, are, are, is going to be your strongest winds, at least that's been my experience. And you can see it peaks out here. It kind of starts to die down. This is uh, Tenzi, so it's early, early on Tuesday morning. So tonight, today, tonight, and tomorrow morning early, and then the situation clears a little bit. And so that's the difference, the big difference between this event and two weeks ago, or a week ago, two weeks ago, is that this is not a prolonged, or it's not forecast to be a prolonged day after day after day after day event. So even if you do get a fire start, it's not going to be three days of what we saw in the Palisades. Still very dangerous, still something to think about, still record dry in San Jose or San Diego and Los Angeles. This is from, um, D, what was this peak? Rincon Peak which is up in, out of Santa Cruz. We're looking towards the south and the west, kind of out towards the coast. And what I want you to pick out here, let me see if I can show you this. This is just, remember those Venturi railroad tries I showed you, the, the streaks from the HRRR? Well, these are the, this is the canyon and see the valley. And that's, that's, that's the topography of California is the ridge and the valley. And when the winds get going, that's what you get. And this is classic, um, classic California. I mean, it just is. As long as it's, as long as California's been California, it has been this way. Uh, in Northern California, we do have a wind advisory as well. That stays in effect through the day to day. Um, and the winds are materializing. Along the coast, we have a, this is an interesting one. It's not a high surf advisory. It's a dangerous surf uh, alert from the weather service. And here's my thing. Yeah, it's dangerous at the ocean. It always is. So just that little light blue should be just painted on the map because it's going to, even on the small days, it's cold water, right? Uh, hypothermia, those types of things. So pay attention to that. But it is big. I mean, it's probably 8 to 10. We'll visit the coast in a minute. This is the fog along the coast right here or the fog in the Central Valley. Having a tough time existing because of the winds that we're seeing in Northern California. The offshore winds, certainly. No fog along our coast. Mount Shasta standing beautiful today. That's the only time we're going to look at her today. I did, I got, I'm not going to use Mount Shasta today just because... I probably should have, but it, I didn't. Um, and then Lake Tahoe will go up there in a little bit as well, and you can see all the snow. And it's pretty much bluebird everywhere, all across Nevada as well. So let's look at the wind speeds. Um, this is Meso West, a very good site and very user friendly. Um, okay, first thing I want you to note is see the barbs. The round black thing is the arrow, the, the point. And the tail is the feather. So that's when you think about, just think about an arrow flying through the air. So that's the way the wind is blowing. So when I look at this, I go, okay, that is a north, north, that's like north, but kind of north, northwest, got a little west in it. You can do that. You can go north, northwest, north, northeast, if you have too much north in it. So anyway, here is the wind gust right here. It is gusting to 18 miles an hour or in this case it's 20 knots those flags represent 10 knots and you can see the winds are blowing though we've got some pretty good winds up in Nevada we've got a wind gust up to not that much 12 miles an hour 22 miles an hour at where is that not showing up but we got wind and we got temperatures that are basically warmer than yesterday by quite a bit they're going to be back into the um, 60s low 60s today so quick to southern california and this is the same map and you can see wind speeds these are sustained wind speeds 30 and but the gusts were are 43 up in that area so the area, la area starting to see those stronger winds not really showing up in san diego yet so it's really a developing sitch so right now the winds are pretty tame throughout this throughout the southland so we will keep our eyes alert on that, certainly, as we go through the next bit of time here. Let me see if I can pull this. I'm going to do a little uh, audible here. I love this map. This is um, Sucho Tower. You can barely see Mount Tam. You're looking out at the bay. Oops, real fast. That's interesting. What are we looking at here? That's Golden Gate Park. Oh, I see what we did. We went all the way around. And then there's the Golden Gate Bridge over here. Oh, interesting. So we're looking at the ocean. Uh, Point Bonita, Point Raves up here. And you can kind of tell there's there's wind at the coast because the water's textured. Okay, you know this map um, because it's the 500 millibar halfway through the atmosphere. Kind of shows the jet stream. You can see the lines. And then the colors, the darker reds and yellows represent areas of instability, which if moisture is available, you're going to get rain. 
Well, and you're going to see we have some instability in our area this weekend, but no moisture available. So let's push through. And uh, we, I didn't even, I'm not even talking about this guy. This thing going on out in the in the plains, the, the the polar vortex, if you will, snow down to Louisiana, snow, uh, freezing temperatures, record temperatures. It's going to encompass millions of people. It's going to last a number of days, and they're going to have they got winter storm warnings in Arkansas. I'm not, I kid you not. So this is going to be, that's why they had the inauguration inside today because it's so cold. I think the daytime high in Washington, D.C. today was supposed to be 18 degrees. So as we ridge out, see the ridge? Well, this is a good little primer. See that? See the ridge, right? And then, oh, it troughs. This is a classic, if you had calculus, sine curve, if you will. And it's a sine curve. And when you get a high amplitude ridge, you get... So oftentimes on the backside, you get a digging trough or a high amplitude trough, and that is bringing in cold air right off the Canadian plate. So that's wherever. Let's take a let's watch let's watch that um, let's watch the mid part of the country real quick, and then we'll get back to that. see that. And then right there, that's when you get some moisture. Look at that cool air coming in, man. And then when does it break? Breaks right there. So that doesn't break. It doesn't break. So it's all weak for the for the folks out there. Okay, for us, put a circle around us. I. Don't, I hate it when I forget to do that because I know sometimes it's hard to see. The GFS, 500 millibar, vorticity. Go, 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 go. Here comes, this is the whole week. There comes, now this inside slider, see where it came from over the top off the continent? That is going to be a dry system. It's going to be cold. Temperatures will drop. They'll be making the heck out of the snow in the mountains. They may see some snow flurries up around Lake Tahoe or snow showers even. But for us, it's, it appears to be too dry. It'll provide some clouds. It'll provide coolness. It'll provide maybe a few sprinkles. You'll, there's that chance for a shower on Friday and Saturday in the Bay Area. And then it goes by. So when we say inside slider, that's it, inside. It's because, right, if that came out over the coast, like see, see if it was this guy here and that thing came straight across, it's wet. It's wet because it's been sitting over the ocean. It's not, it's over a, a, um, a maritime environment is what we would call that. And this other system that's coming in right here, that's coming off a continental um, air mass, which is dry. Okay, that's climatology. Uh, and then, okay, so there's the inside slider. So that's the weekend. So weekend looks kind of cool, but nice. And then moves through. I'm not even sure what that means for LA. That's going to be interesting. That's going to create a, a, a wind blip for sure. And then the ridge just stays. It stays beautiful map, by the way. But look at this. So you're going, hey, Bill, wait a minute. There's something. But that's we're into February 5th and really still not much of anything. I uh, know bearer of bad news or bearer of bad model data, right? doesn't mean that's going to happen. I've, I've, it, it, things change. This Ocean Beach, you don't want to paddle out on a day like today. Well, first of all, right? Just because it's, it's good size. It's eight, six to eight maybe, eight to ten maybe. But you see the inner, inside sandbar right here. There's no channel. There's just zero channel right there. So to get out would be z almost impossible. And you could get out. I've gotten out on days like that. But once you get out, you're, you're faced with those kinds of cloud break waves. So beach not really awesome surfable today. This is pipeline. Uh, <clears throat> a thing with pipeline is they got some waves, but it's manageable today. It's like five. They're calling it five to six, I think. But don't go to pipeline and surf. Just don't. If you don't live there, don't surf there. And I'm just because it is the one of the most localized waves in, on the planet. And you got to be good. People die there all the time. And you got to be good. So I know that a lot of folks, it's weird how people overestimate their skills. It might be video games. It might be wave storms. It might be surfing uh, easy point waves. But when you go to a place like um, Chopu or Pipeline, I can name a million of them. Uh, any kind of a, a wave like this, just they're dangerous. And you're not, when you do that, when you go out and you paddle out and you maybe get some pictures for Instagram, you're endangering other people, right? And the real, the guys and women who have spent their lives surfing, probably one of the most dangerous waves in the world. It doesn't look that dangerous now. I'm just making the point as, as the surfing industry blows up, less people are paying attention to the culture. And the culture, and I've, I've mentioned this numerous times, culture anywhere is so important. You don't want to bury a, a culture if you can help it. And of course, we're guilty of doing that all the time. But in this case, the Hawaiians have built up a culture around these waves. Respect it. Respect it. And just be happy they let you sit on the beach and watch. I go over the North Shore all the time. Love surfing there. Do I get lots of waves? 
I get waves, but not lots of waves. Every once in a while, a local will hand me a wave, and I'm very thankful. And I'll, I'll sit on the beach and eat my lunch and watch the local surf, um, especially in a dangerous spot. So little little old man Martin kind of talking talking stuff. But I just know how tempted. When I was 18, I would go, oh, I go surf pipeline. Oh, we'll get some of that. It's like, no, you're not. No, <laughs> you're not. You're just going to get a picture and go home. Okay, so this is... Uh, uh, where are we right now? Oh, I think we're up in um, we're up at Heavenly Valley. I hope it works. Hope it works. This is a Heavenly Valley camera. Yes. And okay, I'm gonna have to do something here. I'm gonna go back, then I go forward, and then we're gonna pull this camera up again just because I liked because it showed really awesome wind. Um, I want to see the wind. Where's the wind? Maybe we can see the wind here. No, let's see the chairs. It's pretty windy up there right now. Yeah. See the wind blowing down. This is gun barrel, I believe. Sorry for that disarray but see the snow blowing first of all you're gonna have crusty icy conditions today the chairs are moving around pretty good it's cold it's a cold wind and i think if we watch the trees anytime you see pine trees at this elevation moving see that one's moving a little bit it's windy you get the picture <laughs> okay and then this is let's go we'll do one more picture this is ocean beach again so what i say i said listen we got a wind advisory through today and tonight in the bay area Fog is gone. Uh, Southern California under the gun for 24 to 32 hours like that. You saw the HRRR wind speed. So it's going to really get windy, um, but it's not going to be prolonged. And so that's going to be very helpful. There is a PDS, particularly dangerous situation it's in, in, in effect, through the afternoon into the early morning hours tomorrow. And I, I can't help you with the rain. I'm not seeing it. And that's a little a little concerning because now we're starting to get into fire concerns in northern california i mean we're doing well because fuel moisture this time of year short days cold nights stays better but you keep going dry like this we're going to get ourselves in trouble by the early spring so need to have it happen i'm sure it will i'm sure i'm an op eternal optimist okay thanks for watching